Hello, everybody, and welcome today today's Dream Wakers conversation. I'm so excited to be joined today by Miss Julia Youssef, who is the Vice President of the New York Technical Center for the Consumer Products Division at L'Oreal USA. She's worked there for 15 years, and her career at L'Oreal actually began in 1987. Um, we're so excited, Julia, to have you for our week about resilience. Thank you so much for joining us today. Um, Thank you for having me, Erin. It's a pleasure. I'm happy to be with all of you. And Erin, uh, I just want to say that I'm, I've actually been there a little longer than mm -hmm. 15 years. Uh, so if, if, forgive me if uh, that wasn't clear. I've actually been with L'Oreal almost 34 years. Wow. But I just want everybody to know that I started when I was five. That's all. <laughs> Amazing. Well, let's dive right into the questions then. Um, the first question is just, can you walk us through a day in the life? What is it like to be the vice president of the technical center? Well, I, I love, I have to say that I love my job. I love my department and I love L'Oreal. I've been very blessed and happy to be there for so many years. And I always say this to people, L'Oreal is truly a company that has a heart. So I just want to start by that, and, and it's more evident more than ever now during this, um, you know, crisis that we're all living globally. Uh, so a day in the life of uh, Julia at, at the technical center is sometimes a bit hectic, but I, I love that. I, I call it um, chaotic bliss, you know, that's the way I, I view it. So I usually uh, have a day that's filled with a lot of meetings. In our department, we uh, test all our products uh, before they go out into the um, mass market, especially all the hair products, uh, hair color, hair care, styling, anything to do with hair for all of our CPD brands. Those are all our consumer products brands. So my day is usually filled with a bunch of meetings, working actually on the floor, looking at products that we're doing on women that volunteer and men to our program and seeing, um, you know, uh, different formulas that come from our labs all over the globe. So we'll get formulations that come from our labs in France, that may come from our labs in Asia, that come from our labs obviously in the U.S., and then we test these products on these consumers. We have this volunteer program in the te technical center. So I like to spend a lot of time actually looking and feeling the products and getting also the feedback from our consumers. Number one, very important to get feedback from our consumers. So that's always a big part of my day. I also um, am very involved in a lot of our um, TV and digital shoots that we do, and digital has become online a big part of our world, obviously, and it will be even more so going forward, clearly, for, for the whole world. So I'm involved in, uh, obviously, organizing and working with the teams on what we're shooting. Sometimes uh, I will have to even do some of the talent for the shoots, which I love doing. I've done that through the years for a lot of the brands. So, uh, you know, I, I always feel like I'm very blessed and I have an amazing job and I get to work with people, which is something that I really value first and foremost. I work with the labs. That's a big part of my department's um, responsibilities is working with the labs, um, products, and giving them guidance and direction. They'll send us the formulas, like I said earlier, and then we'll give them direction after we've tested and evaluated the formulas on how we could make them better. Or if it's a hair color for a certain blonde shade, uh, we'll test it and we'll say, oh, it needs to be a little bit cooler, ashier, etc." And that's like kind of a day in my life. Wow. Well, that sounds very, very interesting. And I'm curious, you touched on it a little bit, but how have your responsibilities changed now that we're all working from home due to the pandemic? Oh, my God. You know, um, 
you know, I'm still working a lot and I feel like I'm almost working a little bit more. Mm -hmm. And I think that's the same for a lot of, uh, of us working at home because, you know, you're not traveling to, you know, you're, you're taking out the commute part of the day. Um, so you wake up, you know, take a shower, brush your teeth, whatever, make your coffee and you're then sitting at the computer because a lot of the meetings are like what we're doing now, you know, uh, live and um, interfacing with everyone. So I feel that it's changed in the way that I almost feel like I'm working a little bit more in a sense, but I also feel like it's kind of like an oxymoron, but I also feel like we have a little bit more time on our side. So it's a balance. We're working a little bit more, but maybe sometimes we have a little bit more control of what that time is. Um, so I think we just need to balance that. Like I, I know that today I have a full calendar of meetings, but I think we also have the control of pushing back and maybe helping to adjust our schedules a little bit better. So I think the difference is honestly being for me a little bit more organized because I truly love to go and it's important to go into the office, but we've had to like obviously pivot and work differently. And I just was on a call, I'll give you an example with our development group that is in charge of like the operations of um, manufacturing and getting product out there and hair color is a very hot item. Uh, so we want to make sure that we manufacture enough hair color and keep all our retail partners stock, etc. And sometimes there's some decisions that have to be made that we can't sit on or think about as long as we had the luxury of doing before. We have to move a little bit faster now because these decisions impact you know, um, our colleagues and it also impact the world around us and we want to be able to service our consumers first and foremost. Yeah, well, it sounds like you've done a great job of adapting in a very challenging climate. Um, I would love for our next question to just rewind a little bit. Can you tell us how you ended up with your job at L'Oreal and what your journey was like? Oh my God. Mm -hmm. um, so I'll give you, yes, I'll give you a little background. I went to school, um, to be an accountant um, and I you know got my accounting degree and I worked for a few months in a bank in a controller's department in accounting and I really didn't like it I felt like I didn't have enough exposure to people and I was like I don't know that this is for me in the meantime my mom owned the beauty salon for many years she owned the beauty salon in New Jersey for about 35 years and I grew up in the beauty salon industry, you know, um, helping to sweep hair in the salon and as a child going to get lunch for the customers on Saturdays, which was a big salon day. And so my mom, when I started college, my mom begged me to go to beauty school and she said, you know, this is something that you could always have in your back pocket to fall on. So when I first started school, I did go to beauty school at night and I couldn't handle both to be quite honest I was like I said to my mom pick college or beauty school and she was like no 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 you have to get your college you know you have to finish college so I said okay so I dropped out of beauty school which I had actually began and fast forward when I was in this predicament I said oh my god let me look into going to beauty school when I wasn't happy with the accounting uh, position that I had in the bank. I said, let me, let me see if I could go to beauty school. Of course, I enrolled in beauty school. It takes about a year to go to beauty school if you go full-time. I got my license. You have to be licensed. And I always had it in the back of my mind that I, when I went to beauty school, I was going to marry some of my business skills with some kind of beauty company. I was also a... Um, French minor. So I was very like curious about L'Oreal. I said, I'm going to go and maybe work at L'Oreal. In my mind, I was thinking all these things. And my mo mom had actually worked many years prior, had worked at L'Oreal for like two years. 
in between businesses. So that's why I put it all together, the French, the I'm getting my like beauty license as a cosmetologist. My mom had some roots from prior years at L'Oreal. She loved L'Oreal hair color. She used it, the professional color in her, her salon all the time. So net net, I went to beauty school. The day I finished beauty school, I called the gentleman, I looked up his name, that my mom had worked for years prior, wasn't sure if he was still there, but he was. I connected to him and I said, you don't know me or may remember me because I was a child, but my mom worked for you. He's like, what's your mom's name? I said, you know, my mom's name is Maria Lopez, etc." He's like, oh my God, yes, how are you? How's your mom? Well, we connected, he was very gracious, and he said, well, why don't you come in for an interview? And I said, yes, great. I said, I just want you to know, I finished my my uh, beauty school today, but I wanted to call you because he set up an interview, and long story short, he offered me a job temporarily because he had an opening, but it was a temporary position. And after me working there about three months, he offered me the full-time position in the technical center, and that's how I started with L'Oreal almost 34 years ago. Wow. And, <laughs> and here I am still, and I love it, and I'm always so grateful that I got that chance and opportunity, and, and it's been a beautiful journey, me working with L'Oreal and, and having the pleasure of working with so many women and consumers, which is something that I really value. That's an incredible story, and I love seeing the power of connections there. It's really, really inspiring. Very. <laughs> um, so our next question is about your time at L'Oreal. It sounds like a dream job, honestly, but I'm sure it's not always rainbows and butterflies every day. So I was wondering, how do you overcome challenges at work? Oh, my God. <laughs> There's always challenges, you know. I mean, that's the world that, you know, that's part of... Um, there's challenges sometimes when we're obviously not happy with formulations and we want to go back. There's challenges with, um, you know, sometimes if we're doing shoots. There's, there's always a challenge, but I personally am a very positive person, um, sometimes a little bit to a fault, because my team's like, Julia, you always say we can do everything, and sometimes it is putting a little bit more stress on my team and myself because I always want to figure it out and um, I in my more mature years I've come to the kind of conclusion that you take a challenge and you ask yourself how can we do it and we go to the right partners that can help us problem solve I always want to solve it you know, I, I never want to ever say, no, we can't do it. So as I've gotten more mature and I've been in the business longer and I've networked and made many friends in the industry, not only within L'Oreal, but outside, I always have people that I could go to and, and say, look, help me with this. You know, like, well, how would you do it? And always getting perspectives also outside of the beauty industry, not just in our world, but outside, how do people deal with challenges? So I always think that, yes, we're, we always have challenges, but how and who can help us and who could be the best advisors, partners to figure it out? I think people are very necessary, and I think you sometimes, I always say there's no idea that's a dumb idea. I, I never, ever like to hear that from anyone. All ideas can, you know, help you to get it like an aha to another idea. So I always welcome every idea. I like to listen to everything everyone has to say, not just to people in the senior management positions, but I love to listen to people that are not in those positions. Sometimes they have such brilliant ideas. Some of the best things that we've done in hair color and hair care have come from people that are not 
vice presidents that are not uh, assistant vice presidents, and I love that they're brilliant. And I think that I think that's how I think myself and my team deal with challenges are just going to people that maybe have more expertise. You know, it could be in the in the legal field. It could be, you know, I happen to have my older daughter is an attorney. And so a lot of times now that she's been working as an attorney, it's going to be three years. Uh, I sometimes love to um, get her point of view on something because she has a very different... My husband happens to be a mechanical engineer. I sometimes go to him and get his point of view. So, you know, my younger daughter uh, was just in the Peace Corps. You know, I love to, like, brainstorm with different people, friends, family, colleagues, um, to get ideas on how we can overcome that challenge because I always think we will. It might take a little longer, but we will overcome the challenge. I hope that, does that answer your question? Absolutely. I think that's great advice to get different perspectives and go to people who might know more than you in that area. <laughs> Believe me, look, uh, Google Hangouts. <laughs> I, just, I, didn't, I had to figure that out. Thank you for your help because, you know, it's something that I just didn't do. Of course, yeah. Well, I'd love to talk a little bit more about L'Oreal. They have an iconic slogan, because you're worth it. And I was hoping you could tell us a little bit more about what that means and why that's the slogan. Oh, my God. It's really um, my favorite. Uh, it is such an iconic slogan. It was created back in the 70s, early 70s, by one of our uh, advertising um, partners, uh, agencies. And it really embodies, I think, what L'Oreal feels about their consumers, women, men, children. I think because you're worth it means that everyone, everyone, everyone in the world is important. Everyone is valued. Everyone has something to offer. And we're all worth it, you know? Um, there is not one person that is not worth anything. I mean, we all bring something to the party in life. We all bring something so important. Like I said earlier on my, you know, everybody has something to offer and we really truly believe that. We embody it. We, we, we're living it right now. Um, every one of us is worth it. Every one of us has something to offer and something to share and something to, you know, I also like to think that we also can offer um, examples of what it means to be worth it. You know, uh, we have a program called uh, Women of Worth, which you guys know, and that was, we began that program based on this because you're worth it, um, you know, slogan that we live believe in, uh, and, and are very proud of. That's beautiful. I love that slogan. <laughs> yes, it's so, it's just, it just makes you feel so good. And anytime I hear it, not only in the context of L'Oreal, but, you know, you've been hearing it a lot now during this crisis. Like, mm -hmm. I've, I've seen, you know, on Instagram, whatever, people talking about how we're worth it and whatever. And I'm, I'm so happy because yes, we're all worth it, we're all important. A, a, a shout out I want to do to all the people in the front line, mm -hmm. all the health and medical workers that are out there every day, all the people that work in supermarkets and are servicing us, That's we're all worth it. All those people, oh my God, they're so worth it. You know, I'm so proud of that and we need to always remember that we're all worth it. That's amazing. Um, well, I'd love to talk a little bit more about you personally. So it sounds like, of course, you have a lot that you do every day for work. How do you maintain a work-life balance with it all? Oh, my God. That's a great question. You know, I always 
um, was a big believer that you needed to do that. And, and I know that it's not always, it's not always easy. Listen, I've been a working mom. I have three children. Um, I have a son and two daughters. Um, and so I know that it's difficult and I give, by the way, shout out and kudos to all the moms out there right now and fathers with young children at home, working from home. My God, I bow down to them. It's not easy. I give them all the accolades and all the kudos because really it's, it's a bit challenging. So the work-life balance, getting back to your question, I've always been a firm believer that you need to be present in whatever you do. So if you're at work, you need to be present at work. If you're at home with your family, with your children, you need to be present at home with your children and focus on them. Um, I had a young woman on my team, lovely woman, brilliant, and she was struggling a little bit last year with um, her work-life balance and, and, you know, she would get calls at work and, and I said to her, listen, I know you're a mom and it's so important, but you need to focus and your children, absolutely, your family is number one. Let's make that clear. But, you know, I think there was a point where like um, her nanny was calling her really often and she came to me and said, like, I don't know. I said, well, you need to sit down with your nanny and say, like, unless it's an emergency, then maybe she needs to only contact you or your husband when it's truly an emergency because I know it's disruptive if you're working and you're getting a call from the nanny or you're getting a call from the nursery school or whatever very often then it's hard for you to focus at work I said so you need to speak to them and have this conversation about like unless it's an emergency and it's something that obviously it is dire then you obviously that comes first but otherwise you need to tell them that while you're at work, you need to just be focused at work to do your work well, to be able to then, you know, support them being a nanny or the nursery school, etc. And when you're home, please don't try to be doing emails at night or don't try to be, you're focused on your family, your children, your, your husband, your partner, your girlfriend, your boyfriend, whatever that may be, your pets. Be present to the people that you're with at the moment. Your children, absolutely, when you're with them, be present. Don't be on your cell phone with work. Don't be on... That's the best advice that I could give people of work-life balance is and maybe, you know, um, have some sort of schedule even at home. I didn't do it always right, I'll be honest with you. I've learned more as I've gotten older because my children were young and I was very busy at work and then I would come home and we would have to have dinner. And I had a great nanny, thankfully. She was amazing, I loved her to death. She did so much for me. But when I would come home, I would want to see I Sorry, did I? lose you there for a second no problem I can oh. see and hear you <laughs> I, I, um, I wanted to sit down and do homework with them because that was very very important to me so I think that being present for your family is number one priority and then being present for what your job responsibilities are you know um, is it a perfect work-life balance no, it's not, it's not always going to be perfect, I'll be honest with you, because depending on where you are in your life, at what stage you are in your life, that's going to shift one way or another. I'll be honest, right now, because my children are all grown up, and they obviously do not live home, and they have their own lives, I probably do a little bit more work than life balance in the sense that you know, my husband too, he's an engineer, so we probably do a little, we don't have the pressure of working with, um, with, with the, the pressures of, of having to go home to take care of younger children, to do homework, etc. go to, um, you know, 
go to their games because that's very important to attend their games, etc. So I think that you have to know in your life at what stage you are, where that shift is and where when the children are younger, you know, that the shift is probably weighs heavier on that than... Uh, yeah, I, I'm sorry I'm rambling a little bit, but it's a, it's a really important note to note that work-life balance at different stages in your life, you have to focus on some things more than others, you know? So, I think that's great advice. Okay, so we have just one more question for you. Our theme of the week is resilience, and so I was wondering if you could tell us what resilience means to you and what keeps you resilient oh my god yes um resilience to me means that you could fail because we're, we're all going to fail and maybe fail is not the right word we're, we're all going to have challenges as we go along different journeys and we're not maybe going to be as successful as we like to be all the time um, and that's why we work hard because we want to succeed. And so I think if you're not successful at something, um, and you feel like it's, it's a failure, but don't ever use the word fail. It's just that we're trying till we get to that ultimate success is the way I like to think of it. Um, you get up and start again. You, you get up, you dust yourself off and say, okay, let me rethink this and how am I going to um, attack this in a different way or look at it in a different way. We're, we're all going to, to be challenged as we talked earlier and, and we all are not going to be as successful maybe the first time around, uh, maybe the second time around, the third time around, some of the most um, successful people when you think of like some people in in history even presidents of the united states that have maybe haven't been elected on the first time maybe even their second time but then the third time they were elected so you have to always keep working hard and towards that resilience means starting again not looking back I mean, you could look back a little bit to maybe get some clues of what worked or didn't, but not ever being kind of sorry for what you did or what you weren't able to completely accomplish at this point in time. It's just looking forward, starting again, and you're going to get there. Just never, ever give up. Never give up on a dream. Never give up on an idea that you believe in because I think you want to keep trying and keep trying to, you know, figure out, well, how can it work? You know, just take your time. Uh, resilience is that, starting again, trying again, and never giving up. That's what it means to me. Look, I've, I've failed or haven't been successful at times at things, and I've been very disappointed in myself, but then I've started again, and then I've gotten there. You know, um, uh, I'll give you a, a, a little example of someone in my family. My sister, when she was a young girl, she loved cheerleading and she tried out for the cheerleading squad in, in her grammar school, you know. So she was didn't make the squad the first two years. She tried out in sixth grade. She didn't make the squad. She tried out in seventh grade. She didn't make the squad. She tried out in eighth grade. She didn't make the squad, but the, she was a substitute. And then the girl that she was a substitute for moved out to another state. Her father got a job. And so my sister got on the squad. Long story short, my sister, who had practiced so much and tried so hard and finally was able to get on the squad. That year, they went into national championships in Michigan. And not only did her squad win the championship, she won Miss Pom Pom USA. Wow. So her working very hard and not giving up, and I was her older sister, um, I would always tell her, no, you keep practicing and you keep 
trying because maybe you won't make it this year. But and she finally got. So I love to tell that story because that's a great story um, to see how you just keep working hard and focusing on what you want because you can achieve it. That's beautiful. Thank you so much for sharing. Um, that's all the time we have today, unfortunately, but it's been such a pleasure to talk to you, Julia. Thank you so much for taking the time to answer our questions. Thank you for having me. Please, everyone, stay safe, mm -hmm. stay sane, take care of yourselves, of your families, and thank you for having me. It was a pleasure. Thank you so much. Have a great day. You too. Bye, Erin. Bye. Nice seeing you. <laughs>